Look, I get it. D&D &D minis? They ain't cheap. And maybe you ain't so good at the paintings, and you got a lot of enemies in your game. That's okay. How about we learn from our Pinterest mom friends and put them in some glass cabochons for our next D&D game. So if you've never heard of what a cabochon is, or a cabochon as I like to call them, they are little glass domes. They're domed on the top and flat on the bottom, so they kind of magnify whatever's underneath them. A lot of people on Etsy use them to make necklaces and pendants, but for my case, I wanted to do something out of D&D with them. Now, this is the first time I'm not using gloves for safety, so I can put my rings back on over them. I'm using it to make sure that I don't put any smudges under the glass before I absolutely ruin them before I get fingerprints on the Mod Podge that's going underneath. Now, I get a bunch of the one inch cabochons and five of the two inch cabochons for larger monsters. If you remember a while back, I made a free dungeon module called the Crypt of Rova. It's really fun and I'll put a link to it if you haven't checked it out. But Retrograde Mini said, yo, we really like that module. We're gonna make a monster out of our art style for every monster within that module. I said, that's awesome. I totally wanna do that. So we wanted to team up and make this video. It's not sponsored, they just made stuff and I thought it was a great opportunity to both show off one, their awesome art that is done for all of the units in the module because some of them are even custom ones that I designed, which is fantastic. But it's a great way to show off this new thing that I was trying to do with these cabochon things. So their website's super duper easy to use. You can go on there, pick which ones you want. But if you use the promo code Crypt of Rova, every single monster that is in the module will show up for you to click and add into your print. So if you want to add every single monster or you only encounter a few of them when you're going through like this rad Draco Lich here that you can have electrified or unelectrified or all the other variants of the different ones that are on there all you got to do is type in Crypt of Rova and they're all free for you everything else on the website is either free or membership based depending on which ones you use but I wanted to make sure that you got some free ones and so did Chris who works there and he's just an awesome guy so I think that if you want to check these out you should or you can check out his hot roddy type stuff if that's more your style Okay, now into the actual project itself. So the cabochons, you can see, are going to go over the art pieces just like this. I made a little one inch and two inch grid so that I knew exactly where I needed to put the cabochons and way over prepared for this. And we're going to use Mod Podge Dimensional Magic for this. It kind of dries like resin. Now when I was looking up the guide online, I had no idea that I was reading a Steady Crafton guide. So even when I'm not trying to learn from Steady Crafton, I'm learning all his amazing stuff. So. I realized, you know what, he's probably got a good idea, I should actually learn how to use these hole punches as well, because that would make life much easier than cutting them out with the scissors and getting some uneven stuff. But you can see here, I wanted to show, make sure you don't try and make a two inch grid system like I do. Sometimes those little lines there just won't line up or your printer won't work right. I definitely recommend just nixing the whole grid system and just printing them blank like this with no grids around them. It's easier to make sure that you're not going to mess something up and there's no chance of seeing any lines in your print under the cabochons. So I just take my one inch punch around each ones because it's the exact same size as the cabochons that I'm using. And I've got a little token here. If you want to just stop here, you can totally do that too. This is a great way to just get some tokens, especially if you want to run the module. You've got all the ones that you need. But if not, you can cut all the ones you want out, and you can see here they're almost like little playing cards, and that's kind of fun in and of itself. I've got one of each of the smaller monsters within the module. Then I take my two-inch hole cutter and cut around each of the larger monsters. These are essentially going to be the same process, but bigger, so you have to do more. They also work as really nice trading cards, but I want to put the cabochons on so that you don't end up wrinkling them and can only use them maybe one or two times. If you have a silicone mat, now is the time to use it. I don't, so I'm going to use paper. That way I don't get my desk all messed up because Mod Pod Dimensional Magic is essentially like resin glue. It will harden up like resin, but it kind of goes on like glue. I put a little drop on the paper and then I put the cabochon on top. You can see the Mod Pod just kind of spread out on its own there and I'll show you another angle here in a second, but usually I like to move the cabochon around or push it down on the top to make sure that it hits all sides. Give it just maybe about 10 seconds and then you can peel it off from the paper pretty easily. Another reason paper is great is because once you tip it over it should come off by itself. Now is also kind of the last time you can make changes before it's set, so if you need to kind of slightly slide the paper, do it, but be careful because it's wet paper, depending on the type of printer and ink you use, it may smear it, so just really be careful with that. 
Showing you at another angle here, you want to make sure that you push all the way down, that way all of the Mod Podge goes all the way up to the edge, and then you've got yourself a solid setup there. From the top, you can see it kind of spread out here on its own. If it doesn't do that, you're not using enough of it. It takes a little bit over maybe two drops for me, uh, just a good squeeze. As long as you're filling up about a tenth of it before you push it down, you should be totally fine with your Mod Podge usage. If not, there's just excess. Wipe it off. Now, I only had five of the larger cabochons, so I had to get rid of one of these, so say goodbye to the Drider, though he looks cool. I had to go for things like the Bone Devil here, which is the coolest iteration of it that I've seen. I like to call it the Bone Daddy, because it's so dang cool. And the cabochon process is essentially the same. You have to put more Mod Podge than you think for that one. It takes a lot to spread all the way out. It comes off the paper just fine, just like the other one. And here is the Undead Minotaur Zod from my module. He is super cool, and I'm amazingly happy with how he came out. And I wanna show you the prints for how they normally come out on their own. They're a little big, so you may need to resize them if you're trying to do cabochon stuff. But if you clicked on that DM guide on the website there, you can get this whole little section for you to fill out with stats, items that they get, and leave some extra space for HP or whatever you want to do. It's a really great DM sheet to have so you can keep track of those tokens on your own. So while that was drying, it took about two to three hours to get a fully dried set. You have a completed cabochon. I think it looks totally fine right here, but if you wanted a more durable one, we'll do something else. But I wanted to show that it doesn't have to just be D&D stuff. You can get the coolest monster ever, the Dice Goblin one on there, if you wanted to, if you wanted to print one of those out you can really print anything but the cool thing is you can see the cabochons add a lot of depth that just regular paper won't you can even look at it on the side and almost make out the monster for what it is so at any angle you're gonna be able to see what you want now the best thing to do for these for ultimate longevity is to put a large drop of the Mod Podge on the back and swirl it around I like to use my finger and make sure I hit all the edges a pretty decent size because you want to make sure that it's going to soak in and leave enough extra because like I said, it's almost like a glue resin. When it dries, it's gonna be rock hard. Make sure you wear gloves or something because if it sticks to you, you'll get real sad. After about another two hours, you have your completed monster enemy token cabochons. You can even use these for regular ones, but for the website that I got you, these are pretty much going to be monsters. They're all very evil, but all very, very rad. Plenty of zombies, undead furbog druids, or liches, which are really awesome, but I said this in my last video, I think mica flakes or unicorn skin kind of look like holographic cards from Pokemon or Magic the Gathering. So I tested out by putting some under the cabochon and I think it looks pretty rad too. So if you are going to turn these into like a collectible item that maybe your players can keep after they kill the enemy as kind of like a prize, that would be a really cool thing to do, to have the ultimate big bad evil guy be this nice holographic one for them. But of course we have to put the dice goblin at the head of the pack because that's where he belongs. I think these are a great way to add some extra depth without having to break the bank every time you want to work with a new enemy because people will have their own miniatures most of the time for their characters but you don't always have it in the budget to get a miniature for every single bad guy that you're gonna fight so if you want check out the retrograde mini ones because i think they are awesome and they work well with crypt of rova i'll again put a link to both of those down in the description if you want to run the module it's for levels 11 to 14 or 15 players it is a super fun module i think that you'll like it and it's totally free so why not check it out same with the crypt of rova minis or if not i don't know just go print some off online there's plenty of art on there and i'm sure that your players would love to see some variety in monsters like this Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you might want to see some more content like this. I like to make a lot of tabletop props, and especially I like to make dice. That's really fun. Thanks to Chris over at Retrograde Minis. I really hope that you maybe give the module a try. It's a lot of fun, and all I can say is that if you happen to run into the faceless horror creature, prepare for a wild, wild ride. Also, if you make any of these, send me some pics. I'd love to see it. Or if you try out the module, tell me what you love and tell me what you hate. I want to try and make some more in the future, and I would love to get feedback so that I can make things as awesome as humanly possible for you all. So again, thank you so much. I hope that you have a fantastic day.